Welcome to the Wide World of Esports, a show devoted to all things esports. I'm your host, Catherine Knorr. Today, we're discussing esports around the world, exploring the international ecosystem. Joining us from Lisbon, Portugal, is Rui Alexandre um, Jesus, the VP Europe of Wesco. Welcome, Rui. Uh, welcome, and uh, well, thank you a lot for uh, having me here it's it's great to be in the almost in the other part of the world and talking with you about these sports and uh, it's a, i hope i am sure that we'll have a great conversation thanks a lot all right fantastic so you work for wesco tell us about wesco well uh, uh, wesco stands for um, world esports consortium so it's um almost a gathering of a lot of entities that um, work in esports, that promote esports, from teams to uh, equipment uh, companies, um, industries, and uh, even the part of uh, international federations, probably in the future, new that arrive. So that's our, our main, girl, uh, main goal. Um, and um, that's how we are trying to position ourselves in the in the wide world of esports, precisely. <laughs> All right, fantastic. I guess the name of the show really fits what you're doing. Perfect. Um, <laughs> I'm glad I got it first, right? Um, so <laughs> let's, show, let's show the video. Changing the People Changing the World is an international digital sports program from WESCO that aims to educate, include and create children and young people using the ecosystem of digital sports. We create an educational program that can be used by schools, universities and different organizations to use different aspects of digital sports to give to the people tools to improve their life. No matter the size of your venue, from a small room to an entire building, we can give you the standard business, L and educational model to implement changing the people changing the world program. We use classes of robotics, mathematic, engineering, history, geography, languages, internet and software programming, 3D, CGI, caster, coaching, narrator, and the whole esports ecosystem disciplines. No matter if you have gamer skills, you can be inserted in the digital sports environment by creating games, being a coach, a narrator, a referee, and learn mathematic, programming, and so much more. Give your citizens a chance to have a career, to make their dreams come true, in a safe, straightforward, inclusive, and democratic way using digital sports as a tool to create a better citizen. You can avoid school evasion, gaming addiction, drugs involvement, and so many other negative and destructive bad paths in young people's lives when using what they love to take them the good path. Want to know more about the International Digital Sports Program, Changing the People, Changing the World? Contact us. We will make sure you will leave a wonderful legacy to your people. Let's go. Feel it digital, love it real. Deep dive into digital and emerge to real live with Wesco. Rui, tell us about that video. Well, I hope you liked it. Uh, it took a lot of, of effort to, to, to put it on for, for us because um, it's not easy to um, uh, capture all the, the, the messages that uh, the, 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 wor the word esports can uh, bring to the world. I mean, um, has uh, like the video shown, uh, there are many possibilities, um, not only in the competitive part, we'll talk a uh, uh, probably about that a little bit, uh, bit on the show, but um, not only about the sports and competitive and gaming part, but also on the professional sides, for uh, mainly for new young, pe uh, young people, for new generations that want to go in sports many times even like future entrepreneurs and, and um, uh, uh, in future business 
uh, not necessarily only in, in a, the part of coaching or gaming or team management. Uh, so that's uh, what we are trying to, to, to alert that and, and try to, to speak through the video um, uh, in images and words because it's important uh, when we talk about these sports uh, to really understand for people that see the videos that uh, come, to the, come to us and uh, look at this type of videos for the first time to understand um, the broad uh, opportunities and the wide range that these sports offer. Absolutely, I actually do love that video. It's very, um, very modern. Um, so let's let's um, talk about you know we we hear people talking about gaming, competitive gaming, and esports, and also virtual sports and electronic sports. What do you think that there's a difference, and um, what is the impact of that difference? Uh, well, like uh, like you were talking, there is of it's impossible for five different words. But it, it could be synonymous. It could do. It could mean the, th the same thing, uh, uh, but it does not mean the same thing. And it's very important uh, to clear that out in the in the many conversations. I, I, I must tell you. Let let me say this. My background. I didn't have the chance to 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 speak in the show, uh, but a little bit uh, about this. My background is from sports. I normally say that I came. I, I'm from the sports in the E. Not I, I didn't came from the electronic part. I, I did came from the classic traditional sports. And um, the word sport means a lot. Uh, it, it brings with it uh, many references and many and many meanings. Um, uh, gaming, playing, um, it's more its more common words. We, we play in the street when we are kids. Uh, we play with, the, with uh, and we make games of our own. So it's, it has a wider range of that word. Why it is important? Uh, in these last seven years that I've been uh, studying and working in esports, um, many brands and many investors uh, normally come to us from different parts in the world and say, I, I want to go in sports, but I want to understand one thing, one thing. Is it a sport or is it not a sport? And why do I want to know this? Normally, this, this question comes normally for investors or brands or new companies that want, that already worked in sport, in traditional sports. So that's, that's the main difference. For those companies and for those brands and for those investors that came from gaming, it's indifferent. They, they knew and they know what was gaming. They knew and they know uh, the ecosystem of the gamers and of competitive gaming. So for them, it's not important to call it sports. They know what we are talking about. But for the other people, I mean, outside the gaming community, the new ones that, that arrive in this last decades probably, uh, that means a lot. It's very important to, to difference or to clear um, if really it is a, a sport, because that means a lot of things, in my opinion, very important things um, to, to, to level up the, the gaming part, or if just simple, um, an entertainment, an act of in industry, entertainment industry, business, that is um, playing games, organizing events of games, um, either individual or team. So with all this being said, I, I believe that is, um, and I try to explain why we think that it's very important um, in conferences, in debates, in talks like this one, uh, when we are starting to talk about esports, first to define exactly wh what we are talking about because we could do a show about gaming. We could do a show about competitive gaming and a talk about that. We won't be, at some point, we'll, we'll be talking about the same things, but at one point, we'll be talking about different things because e sport means um, more than the word uh, gaming. Sure, and esports usually means particular esports games, right? 
Yes, well, uh, um, that's one of the, that's one of the differences. Uh, uh, um, uh, 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 listen, we uh, I'm talking from Portugal in Europe, and I'm talking to 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 the American continent. The word sport uh, it doesn't mean exactly the same thing in uh, the, the American continent or in the European continent. Why? Uh, in the perspective of the society, of the structures of sport, of the importance of sport, on, of how do how when we say something is a sport, how is it um, uh, ruled? How how the regulations work? How the how the government or the state, the public administrations intervene? It means different things. Uh, so, uh, like uh, when uh, your 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 question about the the. The type of gaming and sports. Um, one of the words you mentioned in the first question, in the second question, was the virtual sports. Uh, again, that is one thing that, at in the last two or three years, um, also it's, it's been um, has provoked a lot, of, a little bit of confusion, and most people um, use it like normal electronic sport. It, it's not the same thing. Because virtual sports are linked to traditional um, uh, sports federations, are the, the the modeling or the conversion of a sport that exists, that a sport that has specific rules, that a sport that is that has a governing body, the the, the sport, and the, and that is produced in virtual reality, in virtual gaming, in Electronic game, electronic games, um, it are differently managed. Yeah, there are publishers, there are companies that produce them. There are, it's it's uh, even in that in, in that point, there's an immediate difference. Okay, um, and um, that's why there are many things happening now still, um, and but also many possibilities in the near future. Uh, Sure, and, and you know you alluded to the publishers having control of, of esports, and you know I think that's an important differ differentiation um, between esports and sports. Uh, what is your background in sports, Rui? Uh, well, I've um, I'm a sports law um, expert or consultant. Um, uh, started in Portugal, then in Europe, then a little bit all over the world. And that's what uh, allows me now uh, also to um, uh, perspective the differences of esports around the world also. Uh, because again, I'm, I won't repeat myself, but the idea is that the word sport in the African continent, in the American continent, in the European, in, in Asia, um, uh, it has a lot of similarities, but it's not exactly the same thing, for instance, about minors, about the formation of athletes, about uh, how do you manage sporting with young people? Uh, well, uh, Catherine, the, the, the best example, we are, we are making this conversation in April to, uh, 2022. The best example will be now in, two, in, in this year, the Asian Olympic Games. It will be the first time that uh, there will be a kind of fusion between the traditional sport, the Olympic movement, okay, and uh, um, the electronic sports that will have uh, medals and that that is happening now. So it it shows uh, how gaming has evolved to sports, how sports are, but it also shows that we have to work together, and that's the important. That's what we try to do in Wesco. We, we need to stop a little bit on, on all of this evolution, quick evolution of esports, and all unite and think a little bit together on on how we can make this more structure and more solid. Uh, because the example of the Olympic of the Asian Olympic Games, there are some countries in Asia that are not allowed. To play some of the games that will be Olymp that will give medals for it. I'll give you an example. There are more, but in India, PUBG it's not it's not allowed to be played by the government by the state. The the, the minister of, of sports and youth are now analyzing the possibility of a special authority. So it's a little bit incredible. And in other parts of the world, we, we don't think 
how is that? How, how is that? Why? Or the world is a huge place, many different scope, many different cultures. And, and that's why it's important to have uh, an entity like WESCO or other entity in the future uh, that can unite every nation around these sports in, uh, in, a, in a, the better way possible. Sure, and that's a big, that's important in order to proceed with esports in the Olympic Games as well. Um, so what do you think the differences are um, with esports around the world, and we could even start with Portugal, Europe, Africa, Asia. Um, it, it's it's um, without getting too specific, because of course, uh, if we do example of one country or another country, there are many differences. Uh, but uh, the most there are too many examples that uh, we need to we all need. To, we that love esports and want to esports to get bigger and, and better, that we must stop a little bit to think. First of all, the question of the national federations. Uh, there are some countries that demand more uh, the existence the existence of a, a national governing body for esports that could co and this regarding the organization of competitions not the managing of the, of the game because as we said before the manager of the game is is of, of the publishers that have the right we'll talk uh, um, there are many test, texts and articles about that um, it's about the, the the organization the national organization of that and uh, that's the one of the first thing because there are countries even inside europe without even going to the difference of continents even inside Europe, there are countries that do allow or do need a, a bigger intervention of uh, a national entity of the state of the public administration in saying, uh, we must recognize that is sport, uh, our sport. Uh, and others don't. Uh, one of the main examples was France. France was one of the first countries in Europe uh, that uh, organized the national federation to manage sports. Why? Because the government showed a, a, a great worry, a great um, uh, a great need to regulate the use or of of the of the games and the internet and the games by minors, by people young of age. So that's one of the first um, worries and first of main preoccupations that that we have. Other questions is about. Um, doping about uh, uh, how do you contest uh, um, scores and how do you contest situations of uh, when you are playing uh, the rules i mean um, again in europe in sport we have a european court that um, looks at the same way for all the nations in europe regarding aspects of sport Problems of the athletes, uh, clubs that don't respect rules, uh, teams that uh, cheat, match fixing, whatever, all those cases around this sport. In esports, we don't have nothing of that yet. Yeah, uh, you know, okay. I would have to agree on that. Uh, and uh, I don't think that there's anyone that can say that will not be a good thing for esports, to, for an athlete, for a, a team manager, for a club, for an organization to say, Look, I've I've been some I've I think I've been uh, um, there's some injustice in something that happened with me. With whom can I to whom can I appeal? To whom can I request uh, justice? In sports, there's nothing of that because uh, all is controlled and managed by the publishers. Sure, and uh, you know you know what's interesting, Rui is um, I've been a hearings officer for a USA Triathlon for quite a few years. So, and we hear the appeals and, and, you know, but when you're talking about something that would be similar in esports, it really doesn't exist, but let's move on. Let's talk about the wild, wild west. Okay. I mean, anyone in esports has heard that terminology. Um, so do you think that esports is still the wild, wild west in Europe and and uh, around the world? 
uh, I must say that unfortunately it's not that wild as it was a few years ago, <laughs> but it still is a, it's, this is still wild for everything that I've already talked to you, uh, uh, because there is no uh, true governing world governing body. There's no one in the, there's no entity at the moment that um, tries to make it, make things stable for everyone of, of the same thing. No, it's 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 different in every game. Uh, it's it's different in some in some areas and countries and nations, and uh, that make it um, really wild. Even for one for one example that unfortunately still happens. Uh, in many countries, you find uh, national sports federations that call themselves national sports federations and that are recognized as national sports federations by some entities. That of that of federation doesn't have anything. It's someone who creates a kind of company that calls itself federation, that doesn't have clubs, that doesn't have athletes uh, uh, registered, that doesn't have nothing, referees, boards, nothing. Uh, but in many countries, uh, it's there's no other, uh, there's no one that can deal with that. Uh, um, and uh, that's make it, that is making it still very, uh, slow the, the evolutions in my perspective of esports. Again, calling it esport, um, using the word sport in the electronic for people of the industry and of the business doesn't mean anything special. It's, it's even good regarding the cooperation with the gambling and gaming and uh, all of that and online betting and whatever. Uh, but for the society, in every in, in most every countries of the world, the word sport means something. The word sport has a meaning. For instance, for fathers, for for people that um, oh, it's something like sport, so it has this part good, or it's ruled, or it's managed, or uh, um, uh, things like that. Um, and, and I could give you a lot of examples, but uh, one of one of the most most valuable one for me and for Wesco, it's for instance coaches, and who trains the kids, who trains the young athletes. There's no requisite. There's no uh, specification for. There's no evaluation for people in sports for, and it's 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 not. I I personally believe, and now it's a, a personal opinion, not a Wesco statement. It's my uh, opinion, my personal opinion. It's one of the worst things to for credibility of sports for uh, uh, make it a safe environment because we can write uh, practice guides we can uh, uh, we can uh, communicate best practices but if there's not an evaluation an independent evaluation um, there's no credibility. Sure, and you know certification of coaches of officials of you know many elements of sports are it's kind of necessary and widely spread across the, the world uh so turning to um kind of a big picture um do you think that in the near future it will be possible to unite all the gamers and esports athletes in one kind of friendly ecosystem uh, I hope so, and uh, they all. If you talk to a, 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 any sport athlete, professional or not, they will all say yes. It will be good, uh, even in their own countries. But lo again, looking at, of course, it's different. But looking at tradition in classic sports, in most sports, it's still not very consistent. The the the, the gathering of the athletes and and the, the, there there's there's always needs. Uh, to be someone that gathers them. There's no initiative, normally not initiative by, by them. Um, of course, in sports at the professional level, um, there are unions, there are happening the, uh, um, that kind of representation, but uh, at the amateur level, that where it's sometimes most needed because the protection is most, is most uh, valuable for, for them, uh, there is still a long way to, to go. But uh, let's see. It's difficult to unite the world in other things. So, <laughs> imagine in this one. So, so 
That is absolutely true. So um, what is the role of international entities such as WESCO uh, on a worldwide scale? Uh, again, in my in my personal opinion, and I believe that everyone would, uh, well, most people would agree uh, in my perspective, it is the question of uh, credibility for esports. I mean, um, it's it's strange to to see at this moment about three or four worldwide organizations that uh, claims to be the new international uh, entity of regulation for esports or gathering. There are three main ones, but even for if you look, if you Google, it appears four or five. So um, it, it's not good for the for the credibility of sports. It's it's make it makes confusion. People there are countries I, I know about uh, national federations of sports that uh, want to help uh, uh, and want to gather the United and and suddenly they say, but exactly with whom do I register? What, what, which one is the best for, for us, or will we have more future? Of, of course, there is ISF, the International Sports Federation, that has it has more proximity and better, uh, uh, more number of entities, but uh, it still needs also to be um, well for for every everyone to be united and and to know uh, what they want collectively, and, yeah, and, and wanting the same, of course. Okay, let's show the, the next video. Young killer with no remorse. All right, so I'll give you the last word. How can um, people uh, find Wesco? Uh, well, it's, quite, it's, it's easy to research it on the internet and come across Wesco eSport because there are other Wescos in the world. Uh, Wesco is part in the website um, and can encounter it uh, on the social network and uh, can look uh, mainly our core um, objectives about the regulation and help uh, other, other, um, other entities in very different countries to establish themselves and to, to go on a path to uh, the evolution of his sports and to make them as possible as 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 better as possible. All right. And how can people contact you? Uh, well, probably uh, let me say about LinkedIn. I don't have a personal blog. I don't have. Uh, I don't tweet. So I have uh, LinkedIn uh, is most is uh, from my professional site. It's the better. It's a better way to contact me and. Uh, to understand uh, how they can communicate and how okay, they can interact through my also my professional profile, uh, which is something that I um, uh, thank you a lot for letting me uh, throw that in to the world. <laughs> thank you. Fantastic. Well, Rui, thank you so much. We learned a lot about uh, um, esports around the world today. Uh, I hope so, and uh, thanks a lot. And let me congratulate you for the fantastic program you have and for the fantastic talks I've already been seeing dozens of them uh, and uh, I loved it a, a lot of them and uh, thanks. All right, mahalo, thanks so much. And so thank you to our viewers for joining us today. Make sure to tune in next week. My guest will be Marion Dox the Great Stevenson, player for Raps Rebellion. Our topic is the impact of sports, esports on young gamers. See you then. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.